After months and months of waiting, the day has finally arrived where we put the fully repaired Archer back to sea. It was an emotional day for many reasons, but also tense, as Archer's 24-foot beam made it very tight in their channel. It felt like the yard, though, was even more worried than we were. They've just poured their heart and soul into fixing this boat, and the last thing I think they wanted to do was now scrape her. But thankfully, it all worked out and she didn't get a scratch. We anchored outside the mooring field for obvious reasons, and then we huddled up with our boys to make this a teaching moment. Never, ever give up on your dreams. Okay, so we're in the water, but it hasn't all been amazing. Because we'd left vinegar in our head hoses for months, the calcium inside quickly broke apart with the first use. It was a small price to pay, but within hours, I was replacing plumbing so our toilets would work. Okay, so now the second head works perfectly, now that it has new hoses. Super fun jobs. But despite me thinking maybe it's a bad day because I had problems with my head, uh, I'm having a better day than this guy. Ouch. So this is a charter boat. Apparently they had a charter skipper was delivering the boat from Tahiti to Bora Bora and he fell asleep and he hit uh, Huihine. I don't know, it doesn't look like this boat can be salvaged. But maybe, they, they do work magic here. In speaking with Dominic, the owner, apparently they work magic all the time. It's a sad but regular occurrence here for boats to end up on the reef and it's his team that goes out to salvage them. This monohull was one example of how they frequently repair a boat at the location of the damage so that they can return it to the yard. It's amazing to see them floating again. They'll even remove and repair a rudder so they can sail the boat under its own power back to the island. How incredible is that? This katana was towed back from Bora Bora to Reatea and is now back in charter. And this pogo was also refloated and saved. And remarkably, that lagoon, the one that I didn't think could be saved, it will be too. Here you see them pulling it off the reef. They had to drag it off with the tug, so you can just imagine how little of the hulls were left. Just the process of towing this boat from Huahine to Reatea as it's sinking is incredible, let alone returning it to the yard and then hoisting it onto land. Just look at how much damage has been caused to this boat. How can it possibly be repaired? But they're gonna do it. They're now in the process of creating a new hull from another mold they made. It's incredible, they're saving this boat. I feel like their exploits should be a reality TV show. It's unbelievable the work that these guys do. And at the very least, it explains how our own boat has been so easy for them. By comparison, it was child's play. These guys are clearly the fiberglass experts. If you ever need work done in French Polynesia, whether that be fiberglass repairs or bottom paint, I would definitely recommend that you reach out to the Reatea Carinage, especially with their new 50 ton lifts. We wish we had that when we were there. So from our family, the sailing family to yours, thank you all for all your hard work. Okay, Elizabeth's been working on land and there's a lull in the rain. So I'm gonna go get her right now. It's a little bit chilly and a lot wet. This is really wet. Oh, I can't even claim the dinghy is filled with water. That is nuts. quick I can't believe you got this lucky there's got to be more coming it was that was crazy no, rain trust me everyone is at the airport like you're so lucky right now I know hurry okay God, let's go us. okay let's go there's so much water in the dinghy I couldn't even plane that, that, is a monsoon. that, that was pretty much a monsoon 
All right, we made it back. She got so lucky. And this rain is crazy town. Wait, why were we? Okay, they're naked, so you gotta tell me this way. What happened? <laughs> okay, first of all, I've been showered in like two days, so this could not be published. I'm sitting there working, and it's like a basically an outdoor airport, and there's, you know, I'm, I'm loading up pictures, and there's roosters walking by the, <laughs> in the airport. And then, because it's the only place that's dry? I got, no, this is before the monsoon, and then the monsoon hits. And as soon as the monsoon hits, my my oh, it's back. My computer Sorry. battery died, so I couldn't even work. I'm stuck in a monsoon with roosters. Can't work. Can't work. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? And I need to get shower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cruising life. This is sailboat life. Look at this rain. Ugh. It has been raining nonstop, really, for five days. We've been here five days or six days? Six days. It's just been like this. Just. Uh. We get out of the rain season. The rainy season in French Polynesia is their summer, and we are in the middle of that summer. It's also the middle of cyclone season, and January is when storm probability becomes much higher. We don't feel like rolling the dice with our newly repaired boat, so we really have only two options. We can apply for a visa extension and go back east to the Gambiers, which is a thousand miles into the weakening trade winds. So while it removes the cyclone threat, it does keep us in the tropics during these summer rains, which so far seem rather depressing. Or two, we could sail 2,500 miles to New Zealand, stopping briefly in the Cooks, Nui, and Tonga. It would be a risky sail through the heart of cyclone territory, and it would test our boat's ability to outrun storms, but would also get us outside the cyclone zone. After Christmas, we're going to need to decide. All right, so here we are. We're in Reatea on the town docks. That right there is the Champion supermarket. There is probably no better provisioning setup anywhere that we've ever been. You can just walk right over to the Champion Get everything you want to eat and drink, and throw it on your boat. Pretty good setup. It wasn't just raining, raining, raining all the time. Okay, we're gonna actually leave Reatea. There we go. We're gonna head over to Huihine today. Time to actually sail this boat, see if it's a sailboat anymore. Ready? Leaving Reatea, actually that's Taha behind me and Reatea in front of us. And uh, it's a super sketchy little pass here, so I'm just so nervous about this boat. Now it's all fixed, we don't want to make a silly mistake, but it's a tight one. You'll see in a second. It makes you very uncomfortable to get this close to land, but this is the channel. Just following the markers and using our eyesight. It's a little bit harder in the cloudy day, but you're okay, right. It's crazy shallow. Looking good? Sure is. Whew. That's crazy. Crazy tight. Oh, I hope this is a good passage. It's not looking very, uh, very sunny. Reef. I'm gonna finish bringing it up. Okay, made. I'm gonna bear away. Okay, we are sailing slowly. It's rain. I think I need a new bimini. Looks like it's getting lighter ahead at least. Okay, so our first
first passage has been a total utter disaster. It is uh, now 18 knots on the nose and we just want to get there. Uh, we're only a third of the way. Uh, we're trying to go from Reatea to Huihine. It's not very far, but we really don't feel like tacking today and uh, we don't have enough time to do that. Uh, so it's another two and a half hours into the wind. Great first voyage. <laughs> Well, we made it to Huihine. It wasn't sunny, but that water was still warm and we were going to make the best of it. In fact, we came here to surf and I was eager to hit the pass. It was empty, not super impressive looking, but a nice three foot wave and nobody on it. But sadly, that wasn't to be. In our second encounter with anti-cruiser sentiment, a man named Matuve came out in his tinny and tried ramming me to scare me off of his wave. I tried chatting with him as I understand surf localism, but it quickly escalated when he said he knew I was on the red boat and that he would slash my dinghy if he saw me here again. It was a bit of a predicament, but since I wasn't going to pay him and set a precedence for all future surfers, I elected not to surf. It killed me, and it helped make our decision to leave French Polynesia all that much easier. Life is just too short to spend somewhere where you're not wanted. And as soon as Christmas was over, we would be heading west toward New Zealand. Okay, wait, go up together though, guys. Don't push and shove. Merry Christmas! Ah! <laughs> Whoa! Did Santa find us? Are they longer than your bodies? Oh my god, your sons are so cool! Oh, uh, well, even his? his? Look, even this, she uses a bridge. Aries, what's Santa? I don't know. What? It what? is a In Kindle! Oh my god! No. It's a Kindle! Shirt? A baseball uniform! Thank you, Santa! Glad you guys like it. Oh, we love it too. It is Merry nice Christmas, guys. Yes! Zola! Yes! 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 Yes!
Because it's a workout you can do with just this. Does it work Great for workout. you? Yeah, you good a abs? Workout. Let me see your abs. <sighs> Honey. <laughs> Hey, real quick. Guys, was today fun being on the beach again? Yes. Yeah? Beautiful sailing day inside the lagoon. It's crazy, it's nice and sunny here, but then just right there on land, it's pouring rain. It's kind of wild. Of course it's raining as we check out of French Polynesia. In fact, it's pouring and I don't want to walk out there yet. I'm gonna wait and see if it lightens, but it's not looking good. We just want to get to some sun. Okay, we've checked out of French Polynesia. Our plan now is kind of crazy. It sounded a little strange as I was telling some other cruisers what we intend to do, uh, but it is the smartest thing to do, as much as it's a little bit challenging and not as fun as we'd like, and not quite the right type of year to do this, uh, I think we'll be fine. Fingers crossed. But uh, checking out of Huahine, I don't think many cruisers do that. He was a little confused about what to do. Now it's raining again. It's time to go. Happy New Year. We're having a big feast at Okay, this is it. This is the big departure. Uh, we have been waiting, I've been waiting to leave French Polynesia for months and months and months. And although we have our boat back and she's in great shape uh, and we're happy and we're back cruising and we're back aboard, it isn't truly, we're not caught up yet to where we were. We really need to be in New Zealand at a cyclone season to feel okay and to feel rested you know the winds right now are not always from the east so even something like going to Niue could be a challenge so a lot of the islands that we're going to you know the wind will be a little bit unpredictable and once we get down to New Zealand we will finally be kind of back on track on our previous voyage so we're gonna run for it it's it's uh, a little confusing why we're doing this right now why would we be going into cyclone season with our family is that dangerous uh, the answer to that question is obviously no, or we wouldn't do it. We have uh, weather trackers. We have two different weathermen helping us with weather. Uh, right now, uh, Cyclone Sari, uh, which is basically a hurricane, is south of us. And with that, it's pulling all of this wet air south, and the easterly trades are filling in. So we have a beautiful weather window right now to get to Saguaro easily. Uh, we might even get to Niue, or we might even get all the way to Tonga. So that could be five, seven, eight, nine days total so we're going for it we're taking this weather window and we're gonna we're gonna try to get to Tonga as quick as humanly possible uh, Tonga is pretty well protected so we'll be all right from Tonga Tapu and then we'll need to wait for the right weather window to make that final jump to New Zealand so this is the big one the big leg if we can get this done now safely uh, we'll be great and it looks like we have phenomenal weather so at about the fourth we're gonna need to get the forecast from our, our favorite weatherman Chris Parker and decide uh, based on his input kind of which which route are we going to go we're going to continue going north up to saguaro where it's supposed to be nice and clear and we loved saguaro saguaro last time was one of our favorite islands or are we going to go all the way down to tonga so that's kind of the question mark so this is it we are motor sailing out we're in the lee of the island and then once we get out of the pass we'll zip by our favorite place bora bora i say that somewhat facetiously uh it, it's still a beautiful place and uh i'm sad we can't stop there but on our way, so wish us luck. All right, join us next week to see what happens. Do we get caught off guard by a cyclone? Do we have the most perfect weather window a sailor could ever ask for? Subscribe and we'll let you know when that video goes live. Thanks for watching.